वेलकम टू सीई फोर जीरो टू एनवायरमेंटल इंजीनियरिंग टू मॉड्यूल थ्री पार्ट फोर दिस इज द पिक्चर ऑफ ए वाटर ट्रीटमेंट दैट इज वेस्ट वाटर ट्रीटमेंट प्लान इन दिस सेशन आई एम गोइंग टू कवर अबाउट द ट्रीटमेंट मेथड्स दैट इज प्राइमरी सेकेंडरी एंड द मेथड्स ऑफ प्राइमरी ट्रीटमेंट एक्सेट्रा what is a sewage treatment in the first session of this module we discussed about the disposal of sewage after treatment the waste water is to be disposed of and two methods of disposal we already discussed in the second part of this module uh, we are discussing about the treatment pra, uh, treatment part that is sewage treatment sewage treatment or municipal wastewater treatment is the combination of physical uh, chemical and biological processes occasionally applied on the basis of um, analysis of this wastewater that is the quality of wastewater and the degree of pollution present in the wastewater and uh, this should depend upon the human health condition and uh, Uh, the environment surrounding the uh, wastewater disposing area and the treatment of wastewater depends upon the impurities present in that is the degree of pollution present in the wastewater this can be this impurities or pollution can be uh, physical chemical or biological according to uh, these conditions we are giving or accepting different treatment methods in a wastewater treatment plant this table shows the sewage treatment that is first column shows the uh, type of treatment that is physical treatment chemical treatment and biological treatment in physical treatment um there are uh, three types of physical treatments are um, accepted or uh, designed uh, for a wastewater treatment system that is first one is screens that is generally um, designed for each uh, sewage treatment plants or effluent treatment plants second one is uh, grid chamber third one is clarifiers they in screens large suspended solids and floating matters will be removed and in the grid chamber the grid particles that is um, the particles with a specific gravity more than 2 that is up to point, uh, 2.65 specific gravity will get removed and in the clarifiers the silt sand and other heavier matter will get um, removed and in the chemical treatment the chemical reactors are used and uh, this will remove the dissolved chemicals this is a most important and uh, a little difficult part of uh, this wastewater treatment and the biological treatment that is biological treatment methods are trickling filters activated sludge uh, process then rotating biological contactors and di uh, sludge digesters are used for this biological treatment um, by providing these treatment systems dissolved organic chemicals can be removed from the wastewater then purpose of sewage treatments um, as you know the sewage is treated before the final disposal because of the uh, following uh, reasons that is to kill the pathogenic bacteria present in the sewage which will be finally disposed of into the surface water which will cause the health problems to the um, bio environment present uh, surrounding the disposing area that is the dilution water the moving from one place to another that will uh, carry this pathogenic bacteria and which will affect the human health conditions and to avoid unhygienic condition in the area because of highly foul sewage that is if we are disposing of this waste water into a static uh, water body then uh, the unhygienic condition will arise in that area and uh, the organic matter present in the waste water will not decompose because of the lack of dissolved oxygen content in the static water body and it will create a highly fouled sewage 
and to protect the aquatic life from harmful effects of sewage. That is, uh, this aquatic life will be get affected by the decreasing dissolved oxygen content in the uh, water body and uh, uh, the disposal of wastewater into the uh, water body also increases the chemical content in the uh, water body which will affect the aquatic life. The stagnant sewage may percolate into the soil and pollute the groundwater. If the wastewater is disposed of into a land area, then this uh, permanent or continuous disposal of wastewater on that land area will increase the infiltration of this uh, wastewater into the groundwater table. This will contaminate the groundwater table and finally reach the human um, human body and create health problems and uh, uh, the fifth point is the treatment makes possibility of reuse of valuable fresh water for agricultural purposes if we treat the large quantity of uh, wastewater that is um, per capita demand uh, up to 80 percentage of the per capita demand is converted into wastewater that will be a huge quantity and if we treat this wastewater and reuse for agricultural purposes uh, then it will be a benefit for the um, agricultural activities and the treated sewage may be used for reclamation of land this treated sewage means um, the heavy solid particles will be uh, there present in the sewage which can be used for reclamation of land. Then the classification of sewage treatment. Mainly there are three types of classification that is preliminary treatment, that is physical treatment, then primary treatment, it is also a physical treatment. Then the secondary treatment, that is biological treatment, depending upon the degree of pollution present in the water, we uh, have to provide a tertiary treatment also, and uh, which can be a biological treatment or a chemical treatment. This is the main classification of sewage treatment. First one is preliminary treatment. It consists of removal of floating material like dead animals, tree branches, um, papers, plastics, wood pieces, vegetable peels, etc. And also the heavy settleable inorganic solids like uh, grids. And the preliminary treatment includes first one screening, then comminators, then grid chamber, then detritus chamber and skimming tank. This is uh, the methods or the steps um, taken in the preliminary treatment of wastewater. Then the primary treatment. In primary treatment, main process is the plain sedimentation process. This is uh, given to wastewater uh, to remove the suspended organic uh, solids from the sewage. The chemicals are sometimes uh, used to remove finely divided and colloidal solids for uh, the uh, accurate sedimentation of these floating particles, that is suspended particles. Then the secondary treatment. The secondary treatment is required to remove the soluble and colloidal organic matter which remain after primary treatment. As it is mostly biological process, it is also called biological treatment. Then uh, the preliminary treatment, I already explained what is a preliminary treatment and the treatment methods are the screening, commutators, grid chambers, detritus chamber and the skimming tank. We will see one by one. First one is the screening. Screening is basically a filtration and um, by using the mesh type or the bar screens used for screening. The screening is the removal of large sized floating matters by a series of closely spaced bars placed across the flow and it is inclined at a uh, 30 to 60 degree inclination. And this inclination is provided and bar racks are provided for easy cleaning up of these uh, screens. These floating materials if not removed will chop the uh, screens and uh, it will affect the efficiency of the uh, treatment plant. 
and uh, it will affect the working of the sewage pumps also. And the screen should preferably placed before the grid chambers. However, if the quality of grid is not important, then it is provided inside the grid chamber also. Um, basically, it is placed before the grid chamber. And um, uh, the grids are removed separately and the screening, that is the larger floating particles, will uh, remove before the grid chamber. The screens may be cleaned manually or mechanically. The waste accumulated is removed periodically, which can be disposed of by burial, disintegration or used as fertilizers. These are the large organic materials um, that can be um, transported from that position to the um, uh, fertilizer making units. This is the picture of a um, screen. And the first one is the pictorial representation. You can see the screen is provided at an angle that is 30 to 60 degree inclination. And the second one is the vertical screen provided. And uh, next is the bar screen. The purpose of a bar screen is the bigger uh, remove, it, it will remove the bigger pieces of wood, plastic, metal, rubber, textile or any other waste material out of wastewater is being removed by this bar screens. And depending upon the size of the plants, bar screens are either hand operator or mechanically operated. If hand uh, clean the uh, bar screens are used, uh, it will be a, a small water treatment system or ETP. Uh, a bar screen consists of a series of parallel uh, steel bars that are placed vertically uh, in the infant flow channel. The bars are usually spaced at a, uh, 1 by 2 or 3 by 4 inches apart. It is designed to catch large chunks of debris to avoid overloading of the smaller screen. As the screen gets clogged with the rags, the water level in the upstream will rise and this wastewater will mix up with the uh, water after this bar, bar screen which will affect the proper functioning of the um, grid chamber or other treatment systems. And um, uh, if the screen isn't cleaned regularly, the upstream water level can be back up the flood, uh, back up and uh, flood the structure itself. This is the bar screen provided. Here you can see A is the bar screen and B is the uh, pipe and C is the bypass pipe. Um, bypass pipe. Uh, that is, um, B is uh, used for collection of this uh, screened particles from the screen itself. And C is used for if the quantity of wastewater is more or more clean wastewater is coming from this municipal uh, sewage uh, system, then you can bypass this um, screen by the path C. Then is the grid chamber. The grids are heavy inorganic solids such as uh, sand, metal fragments, eggshells of specific gravity ranging from 2 to 2.65. Uh, they cause excessive wear during the different treatment stages, uh, stages and therefore must be removed. Uh, this having a particles with a uh, specific gravity 2 to 2.65. The weight of these grids will be more than that of other uh, waste particles present in the uh, wastewater and which will uh, affect the efficiency or uh, which will uh, hinder the working of um, uh, other treatment stages like um, uh, primary treatment and secondary treatment. So we have to remove these grids uh, prior to that treatment uh, processes. And this grid chamber is uh, simply a sedimentation basin where the velocity of flow of the wastewater is controlled and uh, due to this um, lowering of velocity, these grid particles get deposited at the base of this grid chamber and it can be removed by scrapping or other mechanical devices. The grid chamber may be um, horizontal flow or vertical flow and is manually or mechanically clean. This is the pictorial representation of a grid chamber. 
you can see the bar screen is provided prior to the grid chamber and all the floating particles will be uh, get removed from that bar screen area and uh, the particles uh, then after the bar screens will flow through this grid chamber the velocity will get controlled and these grid particles having a specific gravity 2 to 2.65 having a um, weight more than that of the suspended particles get deposited in the grid chamber and uh, this uh, uh, velocity of flow will be uh, such that uh, the suspended particles will not get deposited in the grid chamber. This suspended particles is get uh, sedimented in the sedimentation tank provided after the grid chamber that is the primary treatment uh, system. Then grid chamber are nothing but like sedimentation tanks designed to separate the intended uh, heavier inorganic materials I already explained and um, the velocity, um, the flow velocity should neither be too low or uh, too high uh, so that the organic matter um, should not get deposited in the grid chamber that also I explained. And the velocity inside the grid chamber is known as the differential sedimentation and differential scoring uh, velocity. This scoring velocity determines the optimum flow through velocity. And the critical velocity of flow that is Vc beyond which particle of a certain size and density uh, one settle should always be less than the scoring velocity of the grid particles. This is the main theory behind the grid chamber. There are two general types of grid chamber. First one is horizontal flow grid chamber, then aerated grid chamber. In horizontal flow grid chamber, the velocity uh, will be close to 0.3 meter per second and it is maintained in the grid chamber. Uh, such velocity will carry most of the organic particles from this grid chamber to the primary treatment process and uh, this particle will not get settled in the uh, grid chamber. Therefore, velocity in the grid chamber shall neither be too low or too high uh, so as to cause settling of lighter organic particle nor should be so high that uh, these grid particles will enter into the primary treatment process. The length should be, um, length of the grid chamber should be in between 10 to 18 meter and the depth of the liquid uh, will be 1 to 1.3 meter. Then velocity is controlled by means of velocity control devices uh, which will be placed prior to the um, grid chamber. This is the picture of an aerated grid chamber. In the aerated grid chamber, an air um, pipe is provided at the bottom of the grid chamber and which will agitate the particles inside uh, the um, uh, grid chamber and uh, this uh, grid will be get deposited and which will be collected by the uh, um, part that is um, sloped base is provided at the bottom of the aerated grid chamber and this uh, silt will get deposited and the gris, uh, sorry, these grids can be removed by the um, opening provided at the bottom of the aerated grid chamber. This is the actual uh, picture of an aerated grid chamber. You can see the agitation inside the grid chamber. Then the design criteria of a grid chamber that is settling velocity. Um, this settling velocity uh, is given by the stock, uh, stock slow uh, for laminar flow that is Vs settling velocity Vs is equal to G into rho P minus rho W into dP square divided by 18 mu. Uh, this can be written in the terms of specific gravity that is Vs is equal to G into capital Gs minus 1 into dp square divided by 18 mu. Where Vs is the settling velocity, dp is the size of the particle, capital Gs is the specific gravity and rho p is the density of the particle, rho w is the density of water, mu is the dynamic viscosity and mu is the mu by rho w 
that is kinematic viscosity and g is the gravitational acceleration then detention period in the uh, grid chamber detention period may vary from 45 to 90 seconds generally it is taken as 60 seconds then bottom score velocity and flow through velocity inside this um, grid chamber that is vc is equal to 3 to 4.5 into root of g into ss minus 1 into d. This is the picture of a drained grid chamber. You can see the grids deposited at the bottom of the grid chamber and this grid uh, can be removed by using um, uh, manually or by mechanically. Next is the detritus chamber. Detritus chamber is uh, actually the uh, same as that of um, grid chamber and uh, uh, these are installed to remove the finer particles which are left from grid chamber. And the uh, only difference between this uh, grid chamber and the detritus chamber is that the velocity of flow and the detention period is different uh, for these two um, treatment processes. A detritus tank may be considered as a grid chamber in which the velocity of flow is such that appreciable amount of organic matter settles down along matter by blowing the compressed air through the detritus tank, uh, tank. In order to lift the uh, lighter organic solids or by washing uh, a grit washer, it is uh, similar to that of the aerated grid chamber. Then these are normally rectangular in shape. The sides are vertical but tapered at the bottom uh, to form a through um, that is uh, bottom is sloped to collect these uh, grid particles and it can be removed uh, by uh, from the bottom of the uh, this detritus chamber. Overall depth of this tank may vary from 2.5 to 3.5 meter and detention period 3 to 4 minutes. The velocity of flow is kept between 20 centimeter per second to 40 centimeter per second. This is uh, the preliminary treatment and uh, the processes like comminators. Comminators are used uh, for grinding uh, this wastewater. So as to mix this floating materials or bigger sized particles in order to remove these particles from the wastewater. And the skimming tank is provided uh, for collecting this um, uh, oil uh, from the wastewater. Uh, oil uh, will be a great nuisance uh, during the process of this uh, water treatment or wastewater treatment system. So you have to remove uh, the oil before the primary treatment process uh, so that it will not hinder any processes uh, continuously from primary, secondary to tertiary. And these uh, skimming tanks are provided to remove these oils from the wastewater. I hope you understood uh, the session and uh, thank you for listening. See you in the next class.